to another episode. My name is Manny and this is Grabani. Today, I'll be showing you how to make my alkaline vegan apple pie recipe. Let's get started. Over here, I have about 10 medium sized golden delicious apples. You can also use Granny Smith and other apples, but whatever you do, make sure you wash them first. After washing them, wipe them down with a napkin. Now that our apples are clean and free of dirt and debris, we're going to peel off the skins. When peeling off apple skins, I don't like to use my knife. I like to use a white peeler. It's much more effective and quicker. Peel your apples and set them aside. There are machines out there that can help you do this quicker, but I like the workout. I won't be eating the skins, but I'll be composting them in my Lomi composter. Alright, all of the apples have been peeled, so we can move on to the next step. The next step is to slice off the flesh of the apples from the core, then cut them into wedges. You can also cut them into cubes. By the way, thank you all so much for getting me to 20,000 subscribers. Trust me, I'm acting all cool right now, but if you follow me on Instagram, you will know I lost it. Let the apple wedges sit for 30 minutes, then drain off any excess water that sips out. In a large bowl, we're going to add about 4 ounces or 8 tablespoons of organic apple sauce. Next, we're going to add 2 tablespoons of sea moss. Fun fact, I bought this from Dr. Sebi's daughter. Next, we're going to follow that with about 5 tablespoons of avocado oil. It's time to add the spices and seasonings and you don't have to follow my exact order. Add a quarter teaspoon of sea salt. You can add other seasonings of your choice but I found that this combination works really well. Add one tablespoon of dried ginger and one teaspoon of ground cloves. Now this is optional but you can add a quarter teaspoon of Ceylon cinnamon. Add three tablespoons of date syrup. You can make it at home or you can buy it. I'll leave a link in the description box below. You can adjust your sweetness however you want but I like to add about three tablespoons of date sugar for texture. Add about 4 to 5 tablespoons of agave nectar. Now that we've added everything needed for the wet ingredient, we're going to whisk it all together vigorously. When you're done combining all of the ingredients, it's safe to taste it. You can give it a taste and if it's to your liking, we can move on to the next step. Welcome back. Next, we're going to drain off any excess water released by the apple wedges. Then we're going to pour in our wet ingredients and mix it thoroughly. Mix it so all of the apple wedges are properly coated. This step puts me in a really good mood because it smells like the holidays. This looks so delicious. And yes, you can taste it. If you're not careful, you could end up eating everything and end up with only a pie crust on your table. Anyway, we're going to partially cook this and thicken up the sauce. Add your pie filling to a pot set to medium high heat. When making apple pies, I always skip this step as I like my apples a little harder. But I'm just showing you this step in case you need it. Cover and bring it to a boil. Once it starts to boil, we're going to add a thickening agent. And in this case, since we can't use cornstarch, we're going to use camel flour. I'm using white camote flour. Add a quarter cup of water to about 4 tablespoons of white camote flour. Use a whisk to mix it thoroughly. Don't be like me. Once it's properly mixed, add it to your pie filling. Yes, I know I have lumps, but it's okay. It dissolved in the end. Stir regularly and cook for about 8 to 10 minutes on medium high heat or until your sauce has thickened up. Once you're satisfied, take it off the stove, add it to a bowl and let it cool down completely. Now for the fun part, let's make the crust. This is going to be a workout so change to your gym clothes. Oh and don't forget the head and wristbands. Add 3 cups of white kamut flour to a food processor. You can also use white spelt flour, regular spelt flour and regular kamut flour. Add half a teaspoon of sea salt. Next, we're going to add about a quarter cup of date sugar and that's about 3 of these pinch bowls. Add 
add a quarter teaspoon of ground cloves. Some alkaline vegans use this and some don't, but finally we're going to add a quarter teaspoon of sale and cinnamon. That's it for the dry ingredients. Now we're going to give it a few pulses to mix it thoroughly. Once mixed, we're going to add two tablespoons of CMOS gel. Add a quarter cup of chickpea water, aka aquafaba, and adjust as needed. To replace butter, we're going to add about a quarter cup of avocado oil. That's about three of these pinch bowls. Give it a few pulses to combine. Stop halfway, scrape the sides of your food processor, and continue until satisfied. Once you're done, your dough should be crumbly and should be able to hold together when you press it like this. Pour your dough on your working surface. The goal is to bring it together and form a ball by gently squeezing it without kneading. If you find your dough is too dry, feel free to add some more aquafaba or cold water. White kamut flour is notorious for quickly soaking up water. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, don't forget to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It really helps the channel. Thank you. The white particles you see here is from the date sugar. Let it rest in a cool place for about 30 minutes. Generously flour a working surface and place the dough over it. Split the dough into equal halves, one for the top crust and one for the bottom. Set this aside. Place one half on your working surface and flour your rolling pin. Start rolling out the dough. Since the dough is crumbly, it will break apart while rolling. Just keep putting it together and continue rolling. Push down with your palm, flour your rolling pin and continue rolling. Continuously spin it around while rolling. This process is not easy at all. But if your dough is too dry, add some water and keep rolling. It's way easier to do this with regular flour and butter. By the way, if you see any tears, feel free to pinch it back together and roll over it. Over here, I have a 9.5 inch pie baking dish. You could go larger or smaller, it's up to you. Roll your pie dough over your rolling pin. You can also just roll your dough between two parchment papers, but that's just too much work for me. Once you've successfully wrapped your dough around your rolling pin, you can lift it up and unwrap it over your pie baking dish. Be gentle with it as the dough is fragile, but you should be okay if your dough is not too dry. If you come across any tears, don't worry about it. All you have to do is patch it up with excess dough. Now we're going to lift up the outer edges of the pie dough while pushing down on the inner sides of the pie dough until we fill the bottom of the pie baking dish. The goal is to make sure all surfaces are in contact with the baking dish. When you're done, it should look something like this. Trim off the overhanging dough with a pair of kitchen scissors. When you're done, it should look something like this. It's not perfect, but it works. You could leave your pie unfolded if you're using a pie crust edge mold. If not, you could go ahead and fold it. Go ahead and fold your pie crust edges back into the baking dish. Don't rush this step and be careful while doing it. When you're done, the folded edges of your pie dough should be sticking out of your baking dish. Your hard work is about to pay off. Now we're just going to place some apple wedges at the bottom corners of the pie crust. This will ensure that the corners stay in place while baking and that you get a mouthful of apples when you take a bite. Drain off excess sauce and add the rest of the filling. Whatever you do, do not overfill it. Don't be like me. Make sure you leave about a 1 inch or a quarter inch gap at the edges. Save the rest of the apples for the next recipe. Then roll out the other half of the dough for the top pie crust. Use a pizza cutter to cut your dough into half or 1 inch strips. To make it easier, cut off the uneven edge and set it aside. Now you can cut it into strips. And for some reason, I'm incapable of cutting a straight line today. To be safe, you want about 10 to 15 strips. Once you're done cutting, pick up one of the strips from the middle. Depending on how you roll out your pie, the strip in the middle is usually the longest. Place it over the top of your pie and in the middle. Grab the shorter strip in the middle. Place it over the pie. Don't randomly grab strips. Remember, you're going from the middle all the way to your left or to your right. 
Now we're going to go vertically. Gently lift up every other strip and fold it a little past the middle. This is kind of tricky but all you have to do is remember that for every strip you lift up, you're skipping one. Grab the next longest strip and place it in the middle. Unfold your folded strips over the longest strip. Now we're going to fold back the other strips we didn't fold earlier. Make sure to skip the strips you folded earlier. Grab the second longest strip and place it vertically over the pie. Now unfold the horizontal strips over the vertical longer strip. Don't worry, it's easy. But from this side of the world, I can see that I've successfully scrambled your brains. Anyway, just keep folding, placing and unfolding until you're done. When you're done, it should look something like this. These instructions will be really hard to explain in my cookbook. Using a pair of kitchen scissors, you want to trim off all of the overhanging strips around the pie. Use the edge of the baking dish as a guide so you don't trim the strips too short. Once you're done, you can fold the edges of the strips right behind the inner crust. You want to be gentle because if you break a strip, it could ruin your entire day. Trust me. Again, it's not perfect, but it's good. To crimp the pie crust, we're going to pinch it using our left index finger and thumb while pushing in with the tip of our right index finger. All you have to do is remember, pinch and push. Here you go. I mean, for something that's 100% alkaline and made with no butter or shortening, this is amazing. Since this is an alkaline vegan recipe and we can't use egg wash, we're going to brush over it with some cooked chickpea water, which is also known as aquafaba. Lightly brush over the crust with some aquafaba. This will help give it the brown color you get after baking. Now we're ready to bake it. Place your baking dish over a baking pan to help evenly distribute the heat. Then bake at 370 degrees Fahrenheit for one hour. This is what it looks like after baking. It's not that glorious, but it's delicious. Now let's cut a slice and see what it looks like. The combination of the cloves, apples and cinnamon is magical. And here's what it looks like on the inside. Now go make this and tag me on Instagram. Don't forget to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you all next week.